Okay, we are going to take Edpuzzle notes for converting repeating decimals to fractions. Okay, and so last week we did fractions to decimals. This week we're starting with a decimal and going back to a fraction. And that would be easy to do if it was not repeating. So I'm going to start out with uh, terminating. Terminating example, let's say we had zero, I'm going to do a couple, A, let's say we had 12, 0.12, or 12 hundredths, um, or how about even 9.75, okay, how, how can you convert these into fractions? Well, this first one, you could say 0.12 as I did first, or you could call it by its real name, 12 hundredths. And that would look like this, right? 12 hundredths, and now we've written it as a fraction simply by knowing our place values. So this is the tenths place. It's right tenth above that. This is the hundredths. So if, if the last digit is in the hundredths place, then your denominator is 100. And so actually, I'm going to add. Uh, I'm going to add another number here. How about three? Okay, so that way we have a different ending uh, place value. And then the numerator is just whatever we see after the decimal. So we see 12, so we put 12 in the numerator. Notice there's no decimal point, no, no zero, just 12. Okay, now this one, we would say nine, and 753, you know what this place value is called. We already said this is the tenths. This is the hundredths. The three is in the thousands, right? So we can actually write it like this. Nine, seven, five, three over 1,000. No decimal point. If you were to divide those two numbers, you get right back to the decimal. Okay, so those are how to write terminating decimals as fractions. And so let's put some success criteria for that. So I can identify place decimal place value. That's the first thing you need to do, right? I can write the um, value as the numerator without a decimal point. I can put the place value number as the denominator. And that's it. Of course, you can reduce the fraction, but the starting point is just getting that fraction started, and then you know you have a right answer. Okay, so three success criteria for terminating decimals. But now the main point of this video, we'll start in example two, and three is going to be repeating decimals. So I looked through the traffic light problems, and I found um, which ones we should do. And, but I am going to start off with an easier one, and then, and then we'll do a more challenging one. So 0 0.2 repeating. Okay, that's not too bad. Notice that we can't say the place value. 0 0.2 repeating. doesn't have an ending place value because that would be 0 0.222 dot, dot, dot. It goes on forever. So what do we put in the denominator? You don't know. And what do we put in the numerator? Because the twos never stop, right? So we need another strategy. And if you, you know, my annotation, oh, it's down here. If you 
look in the If you look in the textbook, you can see the notes on um, page 339. Okay, so we have our steps right here. And we did go through those in the last video. But so now this time we're going to go through them just kind of on our own here, uh, in our own words. And so what we're going to do is call this, we're going to call our repeating decimal point x. And then we're going to multiply it by 10 to get an equivalent equ uh, equation. That would be 10x, 10 times x is 10x, and point 0.2 repeating is going to be 2.2 repeating. Because anytime you multiply by 10, you just move the decimal point over 1, which puts 1, 2 in front. And then remember that the 2 is still repeating first. So we still have a 2 with the over bar. Now we have two equations. 10x equals 2.2 repeating. We also have our original equation, x equals 0 0.2 repeating. And so once we have two equations where both the repeating parts are the same, we subtract them. On the left side, you do 10x minus 1x. So there's no coefficient written here. It's very important that you remember whenever there's no coefficient in front of a variable, that the coefficient is 1. So we're just doing 10 minus 1, which is 9. On the other side, 2.2 repeating minus 0.2 repeating, the repeating parts cancel out. And we're just left with 2 minus 0, which is 2. So then we have 9x equals 2, and that's a one-step equation that we can solve. How do you solve? I'm just going to rewrite it one time. Just rewriting over. 9x equals 2. How do you solve that? You divide both sides by the coefficient of x, which is 9. You get x equals 2 over 9. Okay, so all of this can be written in your example 2. And so that is how we... Um, that is how we solve, but let's put it into success criteria. So I can set the repeating decimal equal to x. I can multiply by a multiple of 10 in order to create an equivalent equation. I can subtract the equations, so the repeating portion of the decimal cancels. And then the last step, I can solve one step equation. <clears throat> so we did one, two, three, <clears throat> four things, and we're done. And now watch what happens. If you, 2 divided by 9, what do you get? Can't see behind all my writing. Point 0.2 repeating. Look at that. Or Colossians 2.9. Um, so that is how you do that. But what if we have something a little bit more complicated here? We have seven people got this one wrong. Three people got this one right. Let's do this one for our, our example number three. So this one, we're still going to follow our success criteria. So what was the first one? I can set the repeating decimal equal to x. x equals 3.16 repeat. No problem. I can multiply by a multiple of 10 
uh, to get an equivalent equation. So you can multiply by 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, any of those numbers. So what do we do? Well, let's multiply. The, the idea is to only have the repeating part behind the decimal. Right now, the one is behind the decimal and the one does not repeat. There's no over bar over the one. So we don't want that behind the decimal. How do we get it to the other side? Well, since it's only one behind the decimal, we can multiply by 10. If it was two behind the decimal, we'd have to multiply by 100. So now that, that's going to move the decimal point one space and make it 31.6 repeating. But we can't subtract these two equations because, because in this equation, there is a non-repeating portion behind the decimal. So we need to multiply one more time to get another equivalent equation where only the repeating part is behind the decimal. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to multiply by 10 again. And that would give me 100x. Moving this over one more time, and we'd get 316.6 repeat. So now I have two equations where only a repeating part is behind the decimal. And I'm going to subtract those two. So 100x equals 316.6 repeating, and 10x equals 31.6 repeating. Subtract those. And again, we're doing 100 minus 10, which is 90. And over on the other side, the repeating parts are going to cancel out right there. And so we're just doing 316 minus 31. So 6 minus 1 is 5. 1 minus 3, RL. 11 minus 3 is 8. And then the 2 is down there. So 90x equals 285. So now I'm going to solve my one-step equation. And we get x equals 285 over 90. So let's check. We're going to check that to see if that is indeed 3.16 repeating. 285 over 90. So 285 divided by 90. Look at that, 3.16 repeating. Amazing. So that is uh, the full scope of converting repeating decimals to fractions. But you, I, I want to go back and list any vocabulary that we used. So we used numerator and denominator again. We used over bar. Remember, you can also use the ellipsis, which are the two ways to write a repeating decimal. fraction terminology. We have multiples of 10, right? We have coefficient and variable. So we have our algebraic language and one step equation. Okay, so if any of these words threw you off, then you know we want to talk more about them and use them in our conversation because all of these words are part of the success criteria for this skill. Okay, so underneath your examples, if you can list any questions that you still have, rewatch the video, you know, and anything that you're still not getting, write it down as a question. And under that, write the key points and a summary of the process in your own words. And under that, a few sentences about how this lesson connects with what you already know or why it's important. If you do these things and you bring that all to class, you are going to be 
a rock star when we do this concept in class. So I'll see you there.